The inclusion of the uh, Sustainable Consumption Production 10-Year Framework Program is part of the uh, Rio Plus 20 outcome. Uh, what do you think that means for the future of uh, the green economy? It's very important that we have global uh, goals and measurements and, and best practices how to actually change also consumption that, that we need less material to produce more. That's basically what the program is about. And what can eco-labeling and sustainable public procurement, uh, what difference can that make in that context? Well, that's a big part. Eco-labeling is a big part of, of knowing what you eat and knowing what you buy. So, so you can actually affect, uh, have an effect on, on the whole uh, production chain when you buy a product. So if you know, for example, the carbon uh, uh, cost of a product, then you can change the pattern of production by consuming this kind of a product. And public procurement is, is a very strong vehicle in creating new markets for, for low carbon uh, sustainable products. So, so I think it's, it's, a, it's a smart way to go forward by changing the consumption patterns. The number of uh, licenses for the Nordic Eco Label have gone up after the financial breakdown and the crisis in Iceland. Why do you think that is? And mainly it was a very important political decision we made to put our emphasis on this, both uh, financially and, and with other uh, public resources. So that's the main thing, I think. But also I think that the, in some ways Icelanders were ready for change. Uh, they were ready for re-evaluating uh, many things and, and among those things were uh, what they buy and how they do it. So you mean, they, did they start to live a more uh, responsible life? Uh, well, I would like to hope so, but uh, they, well, this is a certain sign of that. But we have to uh, look into it uh, for a longer period of time to evaluate it. But I, I would surely like to hope so. What can the Nordic Council Ministers and the Nordic Corporation do to help uh, implement the outcome here at Rio Plus 20? One of the good examples I can give is that we have a lot of experience in the area of eco-labeling. And right now we have heard that uh, this is one of the areas in which uh, most of the South American countries need a little help. So what we can do is that, for instance, from the Nordic Council of Ministers and from the Ministers of Cooperation, to, uh, to let out a hand for, for instance, Brazil, when they need a new legislation and they, know they need some help in designing the criteria for eco-labeling. So right now we have decided on what, what, what we call the frame uh, deal in the, in the plenary, and now we can go in and make something specific. The Nordic Council Ministers and, and UNEP have a project uh, trying to export know-how from the Nordic Eagle label to the to Southern American countries. Uh, what can the Nordic experiences and the Nordic Eagle label teach uh, countries in South America, like your country, Brazil? We don't, don't have so much experience in eco labeling process, yeah? And it's very important to us to, uh, to know another experience of uh, more experienced countries, like the Nordic countries. So we are trying to, 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 to learn yeah, more about how to use the eco-labeling inside the uh, sustainable public procurement program. So we have to, to learn so much with the Nordic countries. That have more that have more experience in this issue. Normally, uh, it's uh, something that you use for export. You export know-how from the rich countries to the poor countries. But this time, I think we would all be glad if we can export some of our know-how for free.